and take a little look. Now we, have, we explored all of the sections down here already. Let's see what we have in our context menu when you right click on it. So we can actually uh, recalculate or in, we can delete it. We can recalculate the indicator and we can also move it to a separate sub window. So this will detach it from the chart and move it down here. And we can also have a chart visible if you want to. And now what's also quite a visible is how signals are treated in the Fibo Trader. So one chart window, everything you see is one strategy. We have our main chart window here and below our indicator. So we can, add, we can add another one and another one. So we have several windows on here and all the individual signals which are shown here are merged into the first window which is visible and these signals will then be our trading strategy. So this is why it's so important to understand um, what these uh, signals mean because now you have a profit. If you add another indicator this might look totally different and it might not reflect what you actually want to trade. So you can tweak this, you can have signal conditions, you can apply stops, you can only show selected signals. So this is an immensely powerful tool to play with. It's a great playground and we will show, or I will show in a later session, what you can do with um, scripting and how you can really, really tweak your strategies. Now we already seen some indicators. Let me quickly take the time delete it and we are back to the original. But let me take you on a short tour through some of the more interesting indicators here in the Fibrator package. Showing all would be much too long, so I'll concentrate on just the ones which I personally find interesting or which have something, some interesting concept which shows you something about what the Fibber Trader can display or what it can do for you. Let's start out and let's see from top to bottom, let's see we have the current trend for example when we activate it, it will show us a regression line which is the average of the prices and it will show us the direction in which the basic trend is going. So this is some automated, some automated way to tell the direction of a trend. What else do we have? We have the DMARC sequence recognition. This will show you the mark counts and um, if you know the strategy, you know there are 13 points on top of it counts and then it buys or sells at the last one. So this is quite a complex strategy. Drawing elements into the chart. You have envelopes. When you look at it, um, you have different types of envelopes. Um, currently these are Bollinger Bands. So um, you go to parameters, the Bollinger distance of 2. You can change it and the default interpretation is it will buy when it crosses from if the price crosses from bottom to top of the lower band and it will sell if it crosses from top to bottom of the higher band. We can also change it to percentage signals. So now it's one percent distance of the moving average which is in between and you can change it to absolute now it's one euro or one dollar. Let's continue. Um, another interesting thing is uh, the gap marker. It will show you where gaps in the current uh, chart are and draw a circle around them. You can define what the minimum gap should be. Um, quite useful if you are into this type of trading. Now one interesting concept is another moving average which is called MIDAS which we picked up in Singapore. The MIDAS is a very complex formula which will use the volume and the average values of the chart and is read like a moving average. And what is quite interesting is you can define a starting point and you can drag the starting point around and um, depending on where you drag the point it will c calculate differently. And actually, 
I'm showing this to illustrate the power of the FibroTrader engine. So this is all in real time here. And remember, this is a quite complex indicator. This system has to call a script on the file system to calculate it, go ahead and create complex strategies. The system will take it. Then uh, we had the moving average already. So what is quite interesting also, let's see, pivot lines are requested quite often. So here you have monthly pivot lines now calculated. You can change them to weekly or to yearly. You don't have a year of data. You can monthly, daily, yearly, whatever you want. And now only the last ones are shown, but you can also have all the other months displayed here. But for a better overview, you can hide them. And also different methods of calculation for different gap compensations. So if you like pivot lines, that's your tool. And then we have quite some random things in here. Um, you can create random graphs random code development, meaning it will simply continue your chart with some random values, so you can actually tweak this a little. And then you can play for different scenarios. So this can be interesting for you if you want to play through your strategy and see what they do. Or if you get want to get some random elements into your strategy and compensate for that. You can create random signals. You have the rate of change, of course. Very common indicator. And you see it's negative right now. What I skipped on was an indicator which I actually wanted to show. It's, a, it's the equity curve. You can have a live display of the equity curve in here. So you can see it starts out at 50,000. It goes up. <laughs> we lose a lot. Then we don't trade, it's flat. We buy and we make some more profits. We go flat and flat and then we finally lose out and don't have such a good winning streak here. So having the equity is quite interesting. Let's get rid of those again. And let's see if we have something else in the, uh, in the end. Support lines are a very powerful tool. Support lines do something for you which your eyes would actually also do, but it automates it. So it will actually count how often each of the levels has been hit by the by price in a given band. So there's a 5% accuracy around here and it will count. So 15 times around here, the quote, the price has tested this area somewhere, average, and 34 times this area. So it will draw two lines in here. We can play with the parameters, have the system automatically detect support and resistance zones. So it's a very powerful indicator and we use it quite a lot also in other indicators. So and uh, finally maybe Something what you can show is the X crossover. That's a good uh, section to end with. If you have several moving averages, there is a strategy which says, okay, I have different speeds of these averages, different, different lengths, so to say. And I might have a five day moving average, a 10 day and a 20 day moving average. And I want to have a buy signal when the shortest one is above the second shortest one and this one is above the slowest one and vice versa. This is implemented by the X crossover. You can have any number of moving averages. So let's say we have four day, nine day, 18 day currently. Let's change the 18 day to uh, <laughs> 30 day. So you see the green line is actually uh, 
30 day moving average. Let's stick with 20, get more signals here. It doesn't matter what we what signal result we have. We actually want to only show the how to do it, what the technique is about. So let's stick with 20 here. And if you want to add, or let's even get rid of it. So now only two indicators exist. Okay, recalculate. And then we have the new signal combination. If you want to add another indicator, we can right click on this and the base entry. And the base entry actually defines what the signal above, what the indicator above is based on. So for the calculation of the X cross over, it will use everything which is below here. And um, we can add another indicator. It will only accept moving averages, so the moving average is added automatically. So we have a 20 day moving average. Let's add another one. So let's say it's a 50 day moving average. And uh, we accidentally added some signals down here, which we didn't want. So let's deactivate those and only take a look at the X crossover. And here we go. Here, all signals are, all indicators are in the right order. So we have a buy signal. Here, all signals are in the right order. And we have a sell signal. Let's get rid of this. And um, as you may have seen, there is a folder called uh, users. And in the users folder, you find indicators which have been contributed either by users or which we implemented by request. So you find a lot of indicators described in popular trading books. Go ahead and play around with it. Have fun.